and welcome to researchmd.com another great presentation today we've been doing a series of lectures on endocrinology our goal is to make sure we cover an endocrinology uh, topic from a to z okay and today again it's a great topic it's called myxedema karma okay and again my name is premier Charad. i'm a physician and program director internal medicine residency in the united states um i also run a transitional residency and associate professor of medicine in two large medical schools okay so let's start our <clears throat> the topic today what is called a myxedema karma remember the word karma okay very high mortality the thing you need to remember is like you know even if you treat these people 40% die, okay, imagine like one, I mean, you got, uh, people are dying like 40%, if you take like 100 people, 40 of them will die, so very, very important, life-threatening, the first thing we have to do is like define mixed coma. just read it, state of metabolic and multi-organ decompensation, characters by um, uncorrected hypothyroidism, mental status changes, or coma, and you can also have hypothermia, okay, <clears throat> that's our definition, the next thing we have to go is prevalence, again, yeah, it's rare it's not very common around like 0 0.22 cases per like a million cases of course we know we already said like all the thyroid disease what who, 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 i mean which people like females are like very common to have at least like five to times five to eight times higher but if you're older than 60 that's also very high high risk okay and yeah, it's very, very important. A lot of precipitating factors in this, uh, you know, it causes like mixed coma. Like if you have to look, one of the most important um, factors kind of precipitated is uh, discontinuation of thyroid disease or some people, especially like Hashimoto thyroiders, they might not know they had it or some people all of a sudden they decide to stop the medication. That's the number one cause, okay? The second cause probably like an infection. That's why we do a chest x-ray, find out if they have pneumonia or not. Now, what are the other causes? Plenty of other causes, like I mean, 30 to 40 percent of the people they always have some kind of cardiac disease. So take cardiac uh, disease very seriously. Uh, MI, hypoxia, hypercapnia, CV, a severe cold exposure, like you know, extremely extreme exposure has to be in the winter month. Medication, sedative, opioids, lithium, amiodarone, antidepressant, antipsychotic, and anesthetic, and GI bleeding, and of course, a lot of metabolic disturbance. Like start with a simple hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, acidosis, hypercalcemia, and and then you can maybe if it is in burns or trauma major surgery also can precipitate so huge number of things kind of precipitate one thing i want you to remember the most common is like people not taking the medication or they didn't know they had thyroid disease okay got it all right let's go let's the next thing we have to do is look at the pathophysiology how does it happen Everybody know <clears throat> which one is metabolically active like T3, right? So T3 come in and help the cells with the sodium potassium AT base pump increase of toxin consumption This mitochondria start working production of energy and all that right what happened? And if you don't have this hormones, that's where all this problem starts Developing right you can have reduced oxygen demand and decreased metabolic rate and it affects every system Let's look at the main major system it affects. You can have shallow respiration respiratory system effect They are going to have like CO2 retention CO2 narcosis. They can have peripheral vasoconstriction decreased cardiac output decreased cerebral blood flow So major systems are affected. There's like huge decompensation um, <clears throat> with a precipitating illness they make it like a deadly combination. You got hypoxia, CO2 retention, narcosis, and then you can have cardiogenic shock, comma, finally death. And remember, 40% of these people, even if you treat, they're going to die. So take it very seriously. And um, <clears throat> the other thing we need to know is about the mechanism of hyponatremia. It's kind of a little bit complicated, but I think it's good to know when somebody has a mixed comma, okay? Maybe an examination question right here. The first thing we need to know, these people have an underlying like autoimmune disease, so they can have adrenal insufficiency caused by like primary or secondary causes. SIIDH will be there, that increase ADH. And then decreased cardiac output can also increase because that simulate the uh, car uh, carotid baroreceptors. And then you got salt losing nephropathy in these people that can lead into hypovolemia that also simulate ADH. Decreased GFR, we know, because that causes like decreased water delivery to kidney diluting segment that can cause water um, retention and that can increase ADH. And then low iodine. Uh, and the solute intake cause decreased ability to excrete water, okay? So the, this, all this thing can increase the ADH and the hyponatremia is the, I mean, is the one of the major finding in this. That can, sometimes that can cause seizures and can cause like status epilepticus also. <clears throat> now, 
the other thing is like you can also have um, accumulated interstitial mucopolis factor, right? That also causes like water uh, retention and then can increase the ADH, okay? Now, let's look at the, the clinical signs. You got ultramental status and the coma, the classic signs, and then the patient not comatose. Uh, just getting into the um, in the coma stage, profound hypothermia, hypoxemia, generalized edema, confusion. Again, status epileptic is also common because of the low sodium. And how do you diagnose this? The main thing, you know, this is a clinical presentation. You need to like come in and you need to think first. If somebody, I mean, you have to think was one of the differential diagnoses. Then you have to rule out the other differential diagnoses. And uh, the main thing, you exclude the other causes of coma. Okay, and then no definite lab tests we, <clears throat> we don't have, but you can, you know, don't, you can check like, uh, you know, TSA, free T3, T4, and then CBC, CMP, and to always check the sodium we already talked about. Chest X-ray to rule out pneumonia, <clears throat> EKG, because we told this cardiac involvement is very high, so, you know, may, most of the, co I mean, you know, the uh, EKG finding is going to be like low voltage, just like in hypothyroidism, they can have low voltage, right? And they can have like sinus bradycardia, you can have like left bundle branch block, complete heart block, and uh, non specific gastric changes. Also, the uh, the common EKG findings. So, I would definitely get an EKG on this patient. And then there is a scoring system <clears throat> to diagnose uh, mixed lemur coma. I don't know how reliable it is. Sometimes it will be very helpful. You can Google search it and use the code. I mean, and if the score is like high, then we can clearly say it's mixed lemur coma. They look at the temperature, the CNS, cardiovascular system. Each one assigned like, you know, around from 5 to 25. Um, so you may want to use that, the scoring system, because it's a clinical diagnosis. It will help you, okay? Now, how do you treat it? First one, supporting care, move the patient to the ICU. Why? This patient, 40% of these people is going to die, very serious condition. And then IV fluids and all that. Next thing is the strep. The number one thing, stress dose, IV steroid, okay? Stress dose, what do you have to give? Hydrocortisone, 50 to 100 micro, uh, <clears throat> 50 to 100 milligram. IV you get right and then of course you have to read the thyroid replacement right away don't give PO because they cannot take PO and the absorption is going to be less in these people you always start with the IV and what's the dose uh, you get four microgram per kg that's 200 to 400 uh, microgram <clears throat> and then after 24 hours you convert that into 100 microgram per IV and then you give 50 microgram IV until the patient resumes the PO medications okay and uh, if no improvement, you can add like um, T3. <clears throat> yeah. uh, and again, of course, the number one, always like find out the precipitating cause, like huge number of causes and try to uh, take care of that right away also. It's a very, very, I mean, challenging diagnosis, but, and it's very important to, I mean, you know, treat with the proper medications and all that, okay? So let's take a seat back and let's look at the most common points in this patients, right? Number one, it's uh, it can you know again the number one I'm going to say it again 40% of the people die even if you treat it okay more common in females age greater than 60 is higher risk and then precipitating factors always can remember like Hashimoto thyroiditis maybe they don't even know they got thyroid disease and they might have missed their doses like you know some people automatically decide like I'm not taking the drug those are the people at high risk infection is the other causes and then we have a large number of other causes including drugs metabolic systems um, involvement all of that is there and now the most important thing you have to remember I'm just going to go it over a little bit about uh, you know pathophysiology once we understand and the pathophysiology it'd be very easy for us to you know, find out what's going on and how to treat it okay so the main thing we need to know t3 is the metabolically active substance that's what kind of body you know thyroid hormone for need for everything pretty much it go and um, helping the cell the sodium potassium uh, antipase pump <clears throat> increase oxygen consumption mitochondria produce all the energy mechanism energy and then so if this is not working, what happened? Reduce oxygen demand and decrease metabolic rate, my friends. That like lead to shallow respiration, shallow heart rate, peripheral vascular constriction, cardiac output decrease, increased cerebral. Flow. All major systems are involved in huge decompensation you know, with the precipitating uh, illness and all of this, sedative, anesthetic, and all of this causes hypoxia, CO2 retention, narcosis, cardiogenic shock, coma, finally death, okay? Now, <clears throat> remember the mechanism of hyponatremia that can cause by underlying ca underlying primary adrenal insufficiency or secondary adrenal insufficiency, SIADH, decreased cardiac output, sarcoidosing nephropathy, decreased DFR, low iodine and solute intake, and also accumulated interstitial mucopolysaccharide, 
water retention and increase ADH. So, uh, I mean, re I mean, it leads into hyponatremia. And the main thing, this patient present with ultramelos has in coma. And the diagnosis, remember, clinical presentation. Okay, but there is a scoring system help you can make the diagnosis. Just Google search it, you will find it. And if the score is high, most likely this is it. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, the, there's no test specifically for this, but you need to do like some of the other tests, like, you know, TSA, 3 T4, and then um, CBC, CMP, and make sure you get a chest x-ray to make sure like pneumonia, EKG, you, know, you can have sinus bradycardia, low voltage, complete heart block, left bundle branch block, a lot of EKG changes, because 30 to 40 percent of these people have like some kind of cardiac abnormalities in the system. Treatment always move the patient to the ICU. Reason? 40% will die, so ICU is well equipped to take care of this patient. So again, don't forget, rule number one, ICU, support your care. Number two, give steroids. You give stress dose of hydrocortisone, 1500 milligram IV. Then you replace the <coughs> thyroid replacement. You cannot give PO, just start with IV. The dose is right, given right here, four microgram per kg. After 24 hours, you give 100 microgram, then give 50 microgram. If the patient does not improve, you add T3, okay? Those are the treatment, and then of course, you need to find out what the precipitating causes, and then you treat that, okay? Make sure you just review this case, a very, very important case. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. God bless. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.